Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sarajo of Movie Musings, and today, I, this evening, I'll be reviewing uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which was released December 21st of 2011. And this is, um, this is uh, based off of uh, the novel, um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And as you already know, I, I'm pretty sure that everyone has already seen the first version of it, which, was direct, which is uh, the Swedish version of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And, um, okay, so this one is directed by David Fincher, uh, the guy who did The Social Network. And um, it's starring Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara. So I'm going to say, let me just go over the plot in case, in case someone out there hasn't seen it. So the plot is, there's a disgraced journalist. Um, he's hired by a wealthy individual who is trying to find out who murdered, uh, I believe it was his... Um, niece yeah who murdered his niece and so this uh the, the 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 journalist who's played by daniel craig um he goes on this um i guess a journey or you know investigation to figure out who murdered uh the wealthy individual's niece and the thing is that the reason he's a disgraced journalist is because he has a personal battle that he's been fighting with a corporation and um, it turns out that they made it seem as if he made up the evidence that he had against the corporation. So now he was uh, getting sued for everything he had. So that's why uh, I mentioned he was a quote-unquote disgraced journalist. Um, so he has a... Um, I would say later on in the film he gains a partnership or uh, he, has a, he hires an assistant, which is played by Rooney Mara. And uh, the character's name is Lisbeth, as everybody already knows. Um, so I'm not really going to go into describing the entire movie because I'm pretty sure that everyone has seen it. And um, so how do you compare the two films, uh, the one that came out in 2009 and David Fincher's version? Um, you, can, you can really only focus on the soundtrack. I would say the soundtrack and the directing. Now, the directing wasn't that far apart, but I, would admit, I'm not, I am going to admit that David Fincher did manage to get better cinematography than the Swedish version. So on that aspect, I think it was it was beautifully filmed. Like the 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 scenery and I guess the the way the film was mastered was really well done. Edited was really really blah, 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 really well done. Um, I am gonna say that there were some changes that were made, especially to the rape the rape scene in which uh, Elizabeth's character is raped, uh, and then. Um, the way in which she exacts revenge upon her rapist is a little bit different from the Swedish version. Now, David Fitch's version is a little bit different, but at first I was like, oh, this is so weak. Like, I knew they were going to, like, kind of, like, water it down, but then she does something that makes you say, oh, okay, all right. So they kind of did bring back the, the, the graphic nature of that scene. Um, the ending was a, was different, actually. I don't remember. The, the way this one ended was kind of different. Uh, it kind of showed that... Elizabeth's character was developing more than um, a platonic relationship with uh, the character played by um, Daniel Craig, which I don't remember that being the case in the Swedish version. So there was that little bit of variation. But uh, overall, I would rate the movie an A um, because it's a great story. Though it's really long. Like, in the beginning, at some parts, I fell asleep for, like, maybe I would say three, five minutes at a time. Two times, actually. The movie's, like, two hours and 38 minutes long. That's really long to be sitting in the theater. So, um, I wish they would have made it a little bit shorter. I think they could have told the story um, in two hours. Two hours, 15 minutes tops. But two hours, 38 minutes is really long. So, and you have to stay wide awake. The only reason I was able to fall asleep is because I saw the the 2009 version, so I pretty much know exactly what the story is going to be. So overall, I rate it A, and um, definitely check it out. For the, the the soundtrack was phenomenal, I think. It's the same the same guy uh, who did the soundtrack for Social Network. It has like these weird haunting sounds that are kind of annoying at first, but when you get used to it, you see how well they kind of like build the mood of the scene. Um, so yes, thank you for watching us here at Movie Musings, and to everyone who's celebrating Christmas tomorrow, have a Merry Christmas. And um, I'll see you on the next review. Take care. Bye-bye.